bon dia. Hola, bon dia. Hola, bon dia. Are you making fun of me, punk? No. Now, we had planned to build the rest of our roof brackets this week, but this happened. And when we checked the long range forecast, we did see a solid week of sun starting today, of course. And we decided to work inside instead during the rainy weather. So I turned a humidity problem into a design feature with our DIY disco bed. Ooh, ooh. Disco bed. <laughs> and I installed a bum gun, which is way better than a bidet. It is way better than a bidet. And uh, pew, pew. <laughs> we almost found a forever home for Betty. So we've been working with the kitten connection to try and find homes for the four kittens that we still have available for adoption. And unfortunately, the lady found a stray kitten in the street walking home from the kitten connection. So uh, at least we didn't drive all the way to Peniche before we found out that she no longer wanted Betty. Um, the Kitten Connection is a organization that runs off of donations. So they use donations to pay for the rescue, sterilization, and adoption programs for cats and kittens that they rescue. And they also have edu educational programs um, to help people find, um, find solutions for the stray cats and kittens in their area. Um, so if anybody would like to donate, please check out their website. I'm going to link it in the comments below. And we've actually activated the super thanks on our channel. So if any of our viewers would like to uh, send a small donation to help care for the cats that we have for adoption, it would be very much appreciated. Yes, so, it would be very much appreciated. They're expensive. They are. They eat a lot of food. So, yeah, we are paying quite a bit for food and cat litter and veterinary expenses. So, yeah, if any of you would like to help out with that, it's certainly appreciated. And if not, please continue to like our videos. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe because that helps us as well. And please stay tuned to the end of the video, and we're going to bring you into our kitchen for a day of our culinary creations. And that is going to include focaccia bread. Yay! All right. Enjoy the video, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye! Okay, bye! With the roof ending right against the edge of this wall, we're getting a lot of moisture along this wall so in the bedroom in the kitchen and in the bathroom it seems to be worse in the bedroom though because the bedroom is the furthest away from the wood stove so the other rooms have less mold because they're kept a little bit warmer and drier from the heat from the wood stove and the bed frame that we bought is with storage inside which was a great idea in the summer when there was no humidity, or at least no rain. But we've had to remove everything that we had stored underneath because we're getting mold. So you can see a little bit on the wood here and here. I keep cleaning it with vinegar I'm just using straight cleaning vinegar because I don't want to add any more water to this. So, yeah, there's a pretty good patch growing right here. So part of the problem is you don't have any airflow with this style of bed frame underneath. So having the slats underneath the mattress is almost pointless because you now, once you close it, it's an enclosed box. So, today I'm going to turn a problem into a design feature. We picked up 
an LED light strip and I'm going to drill a bunch of holes in the bed frame and stick the lights in it. Woo, disco bed! Disco bed! Exactly! <laughs> So that's the plan today. I'm going to make a big mess and hopefully fix the problem. Okay, so I have a rough draft of the design that I want to create. And I've created a cardboard template. So I've done the template in two pieces so they're easier to mark onto the bed frame. And I created notches along the bottom edge so that you get the placement correct. So now I just need to test and see if the pencil crowns that I have wash off of the bed frame easily. So I'm going to make a mark on the inside and then see how easy it is to wipe off afterwards. <laughs> so I've drawn the first one already and I don't know if you can see, but I drew little triangles at the bottom and I have the design from this one marked out on the second piece. So I'm just lining them up like that. And then I'm double checking that the previous lines line up with these ones here. So, over here that you don't know. thanks. Now I'm just drawing this one on. So, that is the first pattern here. I've measured one inch in, and then starting the design almost another inch from, from where this piece connects so that we're not just drilling into the other side. And this pattern I should be able to do twice along the bottom and I'm not sure probably three maybe four times along the sides. We've started drilling holes. So this is what we have so far. I'm starting on the side, so I've marked out the design with the pencil crayon, and I'm starting with the larger of the drill bits. I have drilled a hole so that the cable can go inside, so there's less for these guys to play with, mm -hmm. because the light strip is fairly flimsy, so I just have to plug this in. You have a helper. I have two actually, but he's inside already. Oh, that's what it looks like. All lit up. What do you think? Pretty cool. So, I moved the lights about, what, two inches away from the edges so that there was more light coming through because it wasn't very bright. Like me. <laughs> No, like me. Apparently, I'm not that bright. I don't know how to do light strips, so. Anyway, that'll do. I'm closing this before somebody goes in there and mucks with my lights. Okay, so there's the bed. Now you can turn them off. There you go. Shiny disco ball. Hello. Hello. Today, what are we, put, what are we doing? <laughs> We're installing the bum gun. Bum gun. There you go. That was what I was looking for. So this is my piece for... That's your piece. That's my piece, yo. <laughs> pew, pew. What are you, a gangster? Pew, pew, pew. That's for Alicia. Rub, uh, Alicia. <laughs> Rub Yeah. Pew, pew. 
Yeah, like the eighties arcade games. No, pew that's pew. How, that's how a woman makes gun noises. <laughs> oh, really? You need to wrap something around that so it doesn't get scratched. Probably. Okay. How about a rubber glove? Let me get one for you. Ooh. So those would be off. Oh, okay. That would be the toilet on. Right. That would be both on. Right. That would be just the the, just bum, the bum gun. gun. Just the bum gun on. Okay. Right. Yes. So that should be off. Should be. <laughs> Do you want me to go uh, turn the water back on then? And maybe open the window and scream at me if water starts gushing out? Yes. Okay. That would be good. Uh, I'll let you film that. <clears throat> I heard it come on. And I don't see any leaks. Alrighty. Okay. Now, where's the sprayer it's part? It's on the thing over there. On the thing over here. Not that thing. Which table? Right there. Oh no, wait, I got it. What? Oh, so I'm not blind. It's in your pocket. <laughs> What's in your pocket, precious? Yeah, it's my pocket, precious. <laughs> Ew. Ready? Yep. No. Mm -hmm. No. Here, let me uh, do that again. Oh, yeah. It leaks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these washers are no good. Is that our bum gun all it's hooked up? It's your bum gun. <laughs> bum gun. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> nice. There you go. There's your bum gun. Perfect. I just got to hook it up somewhere. Yeah. Would it be better if this was like instead of these up to the side so this hangs like down more? Or no? Mm. Would that be too hard to do? It might not be tight enough. It might leak. Mm. And you can't like it's already like I, as tight I, as it goes? I possibly could but I, I all these fittings in the wall are loose. I don't uh, want to break them. If I break right. them, we're screwed. I don't yeah. break the wall and replace the fittings. So that's why I tightened it as, as much as I could and centered it, basically. Right. Okay. So that's the bum gun fully installed with the wall mount. It looks good. And it works well. I tried it out. It's a little chilly. It's fresh. <laughs> All right, so the weather isn't great, and we decided to stay inside today, but Grant is making hummus using the roasted garlic oil that he made, and sea salt, chickpeas. Is this your homemade pepper oil? That's my hot pepper oil. Nice, so that is using the malagetta and some chili peppers. So the malagetta were from our garden. And paprika, some piri piri, black pepper, and cumin. Just using one clove because we're gonna use all that garlic oil. Okay. I do not drain them. All the garlic oil, roasted garlic, so good. I don't like a lot of salt. This is sea salt that we harvested from the ocean. Yes. I don't usually use instruments but I'm about a tablespoon of cumin, teaspoon of cumin, cumin juice, cube and a half, 
pepper. About that much. <laughs> This is spicy, so we're not really that spicy, people. <laughs> Paprika. Pakala. And then, I think that was it for that. Oh, Did you use garlic. the oil? Yeah, I'm going to put it in as it's blending. Oh, okay. We have garlic, leeks, some herb de Provence that I put in my mortar and pestle to grind it down a little bit, and some black pepper. I have prepped the pumpkin and carrots, and I have rinsed the watercress. Grant actually took a few pieces of the watercress because some of them do have roots starting on them like this one here so i'll try and focus in on the roots there so we're just deglazing the pan with some white wine and we're also going to add in the pumpkin and carrots all right I did add some sweet pepper off camera and the vegetables are softening up nicely so I'm going to add in the potato water I'm also going to add in the chicken cubes I'm just going to let that come to a boil and simmer for a little while. All right, so the vegetables are tender enough now. And I'm just going to add in the watercress. And now that the watercress is in there, I'm just going to turn the flame off for now and pop the lid back on. Next up is the focaccia bread. So to start with, I'm using Herbe de Provence. So you need two tablespoons of dried rosemary, or in my case, Herbe de Provence. You need one cup of boiling hot water. All right, and we're going to pour the boiling hot water over the dry herbs. And we're gonna let those sit for 20 minutes to infuse the water with flavor. Now we want to mix one tablespoon of honey with the infused water. So we're just going to strain that into a bowl with honey. So now that that is mixed together, we're going to add one packet of yeast. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that for five minutes. Okay, close enough. A teaspoon of salt. And now we need a tablespoon of olive oil. So I poured this over the pot of potatoes that I had left in case I overflowed a tablespoon. So I have one cup of cooled mashed potatoes and so far one cup of flour. So total you need two and a half cups of flour. Let's just add that in. Okay. 
So there's one cup of flour. All right, I'm gonna throw in some olive oil in this bowl. that in there. I have a tea towel so I just wet it under some warm water and wrung it out and now I'm going to set this over on the coffee table so that it is closer to the wood stove and it's nice and warm so that it will rise. So we'll come back in about half an hour. Okay, so I somehow messed up when I was trying to record punching down the dough and getting it into the pan. So yeah, we missed that part of the process, but it has now sat for half an hour so that it can rise. And we have the oven at 400 degrees and I have a mix of Parmesan cheese and a Scottish cheddar. It's a white cheddar. It's like a nice, sharp, really flavorful, it's excellent cheese. So it needs to bake for 16 to 18 minutes and then we'll let it cool a little bit before we get into it. Okay, so it is out of the oven and I let it cool off a little bit. Smells okay. It's maybe needed to be in the oven a little bit more. I think it's a bit doughy. Yeah, maybe a little, but it's good. Okay. Maybe a little longer. Should I throw the rest back in? Yeah, pull it back in. 